One of the most important developments in French language learning over the past 10 years has been the shift towards action-oriented tasks. When educators see learners as social actors, their ability to learn and use language becomes both purposeful and entirely asset-based. Language is most useful when it is used for a specific purpose. Researcher Enrica Picardo developed a framework that proposes an action-oriented approach, making it possible to connect what happens in the classroom with what is happening in the outside world. This action-oriented approach also makes it possible to give learning meaning that is grounded in real life. It makes it possible to take into account all of the complexity of language, language use, and language learning. Our goal as language educators is to prepare learners to become participants in the wider world with a number of tools at their disposal, including the ability to communicate and interact in French for life. In 2013, the Ontario Ministry of Education released the framework for French as a second language. The notion that French is for all learners was identified as one of the guiding principles for French programming. This module will explore building action-oriented tasks in a way that leaves room for adaptations to content, process, and product so that all learners are able to learn and achieve in a way that respects each person's strengths, interests, and goals. Educators are the most important factor in success of their learners. In the case of a French educator, we hope to support and encourage learners to become proficient, confident, and skilled at using French. In a very real way, French is a subject where success can only be measured over the course of a learner's life, how they will go on to use French in their daily life beyond the classroom. The research that informed the creation of the 2013 and 2014 curriculum documents and that supports best practices indicates that helping learners to practice and develop their competencies through action-oriented tasks has a more authentic impact than any other approach. When this approach is combined with adaptations to content, process, and product that are appropriate and targeted for each learner, it becomes a powerful recipe to transform the experience learners have in learning French. This module has two overarching goals. First, to provide educators with the background and tools that will help them to conceptualize the scope of action-oriented tasks. And second, to ensure that educators have the information they need so that planning and execution of action-oriented tasks ensures inclusive approaches and steps for all learners to be successful in a meaningful way. We need to be careful not to allow the common European framework to become like wallpaper. It mustn't be something we only notice when someone points it out. The CEFR remains the single most revolutionary element to contribute to the transformation of French teaching and learning. The biggest reason that the CEFR remains central to learner, learning, and indeed success is that it shifted the focus to an asset-based approach and puts the spotlight on interaction in a way that had never been done before in language classes. Transforming FSL provides much more information about the value of this approach in its research-based papers on the action-oriented approach and on its big ideas of the CEFR. For a long time, learners were asked to produce and comprehend in a very limited way when learning French. The CEFR forces educators to consider how learners develop their abilities to understand authentic spoken French and to take that notion even further, how to respond and interact in equally authentic ways. Concretely, this means that French almost never happens at the learner desk alone. It happens in a variety of contexts that are highly meaningful to learners. Since the pedagogical foundation of action-oriented tasks is rooted in learner-centered considerations, this is an approach that favors multiple entry points and is a perfect way to introduce meaningful learner voice and choice. Leading researchers in inclusive strategies for language learners, Katie Arnett and René Bourgoin state that language learners who understand their strengths, what supports they need, what they need to progress in a task, what strategies are beneficial to them, how to self-monitor their learning, and how to develop into more autonomous learners, take a more active role in their own learning. In such circumstances, powerful learning takes place because language learners can advocate for their own learning and learning needs. And that is a quote directly from Access for Success, a book published by Arnett Bourgoin. 
it is important to remember this when looking at action-oriented tasks, because one of our goals is to help students become more active and take, more, take on more autonomy. When considering the parameters of action-oriented tasks, we are reminded that they should be open-ended and complex, and that they must be based on possible real-life social situations. Tasks should set the learner up to act as a social agent who has the goal of successfully completing a specific task for a specific purpose, while still considering such factors as cultural context and social parameters. The linked document in the guide provides a more in-depth exploration of ideas to consider when developing action-oriented tasks. An educator who deeply understands and embraces the tenets of the revised FSL curriculum understands that the key goal of all FSL pathways is to support learners in moving beyond the classroom into authentic social situations that will foster confidence and competency. When creating tasks, it is critical that the educator considers the needs, interests, and goals of the learners as they develop relevant and authentic learning opportunities that are appropriate to the competency levels of their learners. High-quality action-oriented tasks will, at their core, create within learners the desire to communicate and engage not only with one another, but also with the larger community and world. In order to accomplish this, tasks must be appropriately scaffolded so that learners can identify their strengths and needs in order to progress through the learning journey. This, in turn, will better prepare learners for future opportunities for authentic, real-world situations. These carefully designed tasks should have an explicit communication-driven purpose and multiple methods for successful demonstration of learning. As educators plan, develop, and adapt learning tasks, they must also carefully consider how they can embrace the diversity of needs and experiences that each learner brings to the classroom setting. As educators work to design learning tasks, it is critical to maintain the mindset that effective learning is grounded in a setting where learners see themselves and are indeed central to and engaged in the learning journey. As such, we must ensure that the goals of learning tasks are relevant, authentic, and appropriate to the needs and goals of the learners themselves. Effective tasks create an environment where learners embrace the need to communicate using spontaneous and purposeful language as they develop confidence and competency in their own role as social actors in the real-life tasks. It is critical then to identify opportunities for learners to weave their interests, hobbies, and individual goals into the learning journey. Accessing this process from the entry point that is most appropriate to their own individual needs. They must develop the ability to identify the skills they need, as well as the smaller steps required to develop those skills, so that they can build connections to the structured learning tasks. Beyond this, they must also be able to visualize how these competencies will allow them to take their own learning beyond the four walls of the classroom. Finally, carefully scaffolded experiences can be used to help them to better identify, understand, and value their own needs and experiences as they work to explore the content and develop confidence and competency in the target language. Life unfolds through a variety of social interactions. While language can offer us diverse pleasures, such as reading and discovering the arts through music, film, theater, and poetry, it truly is through interactions that a language offers its most powerful opportunities. Anytime a person enters into a social interaction, they are faced with three critical questions that will ultimately shape how the interaction will need to unfold. What are the goals? What are the parameters of the interaction? What vocabulary do I need to know? Action-oriented tasks in the classroom are meant to provide the learners with the tools they will ultimately use when faced with a social interaction for a specific purpose. The goals and parameters of a job interview will differ from those of meeting someone new in a social or a work setting. 
Likewise, a commercial exchange to secure services or make a purchase will be different from an interaction during travel. Learners also need to be prepared to help someone in the target language as they develop more skills. A very practical task that any person may need support with eventually is requiring healthcare assistance in a target language or possibly with recovering a lost item while traveling. While it may not be possible to explicitly work with each of these specific situations in a given year or course, and even if we could, it is highly unlikely that a learner will remember the specifics of any one of these situations. It is essential that the goal of learning always be the long-term ability of the learner to enter into interactions with the confidence, tools, and flexibility needed to be successful. This is why tasks must connect to the learner and therefore why we need to know our learners well. Tasks need to be realistic at the right level of language to allow a comfortable entry point and be challenging enough to foster growth. The tasks need to be connected to the curriculum expectations and designed with flexibility so that multiple elements of the task embrace the diversity of learners' experiences and needs. It is good when not everyone completes the task in the same way. Richness in learning is increased. When tasks target language competencies, provide clear steps, objectives, and success criteria, and help the learner to be aware of the strategies they are developing for now and for the future, the learning will be deeply transformational. At this time, you may wish to pause the video to consider these questions. How are you structuring learning tasks for your learners so that the clear goal is competency and not content? And how are you setting learning goals for what you will likely never see in a classroom? The task we are proposing in this module serves as a model for how you might develop an overarching task that leads to achieving an authentic goal while also providing suggestions for the steps that learners must accomplish along the way. The task in and of itself is meant to be motivating, self-directed, and achievable. The task is authentic because it connects to a real-world experience that learners might have in the future, namely an opportunity to travel to a French-speaking area for a purpose. The task offers a connection to the learners' lives in the way that it asks the learners to prepare a profile of themselves and of an ideal twin that they will live with during the exchange. The learners are offered multiple entry points because the task can be adapted for content, process, and product. For example, if the learner has fundamental communication skills mastered, they can begin more quickly to engage in authentic interactions and experiences, while learners at a lower proficiency level can begin with scaffolded tasks designed to develop basic interaction skills. This model task will provide a good example for reflection as we consider how a task can be achievable and offer multiple entry points for learners. We will explore this idea in greater detail in the coming section. The key with this task, and indeed any action-oriented task, is to plan it with two main questions in mind. Firstly, what can and will my learners do as part of their life that can involve the target language? And secondly, what skills do my learners need in order to achieve the overall goals of the task? The content of this task centers on having the learner select their destination and their purpose for their time on the trip. In order to select their destination, learners will need to research different French communities as identified in the grade specific intercultural understanding expectations in the curriculum document. For example, grade 8 students would research European French communities. There are many different ways to support learners to research localities in French or by using French as a support. One option is to have the learners research using images and construct simple phrases using repeated prompts that are familiar. Learners can use the images to support them in building phrases such as je veux voir or je veux visiter. Although this is a very basic approach to building the ability to communicate about their chosen location in French, it does use the asset-oriented approach of the CEFR. Even at this level, we see that learners can communicate basic wishes as a part of their plan.
For a learner who is at a more advanced research level, a tourism website or a brochure allows learners to gain more information and communicate in greater detail. We would advocate that the learners have the option of using a text-to-speech feature on a device to support them with comprehension. All learners can benefit from hearing language spoken as they read it, both for vocabulary development and for developing the connections between reading and listening. Lastly, for learners who are working at an advanced A2, B1, or even B2 level, research can also include authentic conversations either via email or better yet, virtual meetings. Action-oriented tasks are generally most effective when they involve actual two-way communication that is both meaningful and purposeful. Taking our previous examples, learners could attempt to reach out and speak with an employee at a tourism office of their chosen community. Although this is not a guaranteed method, if the learner is able to indeed connect with someone, their answers become much more personalized and much more authentic. It goes without saying, however, that in preparing for any of these tasks at any level, a significant part of time must be given for modeling and practicing the communication that will end up being a part of the task, and of course beyond that as well. It is also critical to reflectively scaffold the use of resources so that learners are able to successfully develop not only the skills required to access and use a rich variety of resources, but also the metacognitive strategies that will allow them to use and adapt these skills to authentic situations in the future. As you begin to select content to support your learners, it is important to consider not only the proficiency level of the learners in your classroom, but also any key strengths or needs of those learners. How will you provide print material that is both rich and accessible? And how will you scaffold access to these texts so that learners can experience success at the appropriate level of challenge for them? How can the choice of content that is in written versus audio form scaffold receptive and expressive language to meet the needs of your learners at various stages in their learning process? How can you incorporate thoughtful, meaningful, and scaffolded mediation activities to bridge gaps in understanding and meet diverse learning needs. Choosing effective and appropriate materials and building in required scaffolding provided both by resources and by the whole learning community will help learners to build confidence in exploring the content. At this time, you may wish to pause the video to consider these questions. How are you meeting the learners where they are in their learning journey and leveraging their strengths? How will you incorporate diverse resources to meet learners at varying proficiency levels? Adapting process means allowing learners to follow their own plan as they work through the steps of the task. Much like a traveler on a journey, learners need to be able to choose their own route in order to arrive at the destination of the full task. The traveler will choose the route that makes them feel safest and the one that most satisfies their needs. Some will choose the scenic route, others the fastest highway. Learners not only need to know that they have options in their route, but also that there will be signposts and rest stops along the way that will lead them to the right spot. Some learners will require educator modeling in a very direct way. Others will choose technological supports such as voice to text or text to voice applications. It should be noted here that the use of online dictionaries can be encouraged, but again with appropriate modeling and scaffolding. The important element is not how the learner is completing the task, but rather how well the learner is able to practice and build the skills they need to complete the task. It is here that we begin to see the importance of clear, co-constructed success criteria, because it is through the success criteria that the learner and the educator are able to identify successes, areas for support, and the potential need to find alternative strategies and processes. This slide suggests a number of tools that can be used to help meet the diverse needs of learners in your classroom. As educators, we are called to consider a wide array of tools and strategies, and then to select the ones that will most effectively meet the needs of our learners. 
In addition, by exposing learners to varied ways of using the many tools and strategies available to them, we in turn help learners to build their own toolkits so that in the future, they are better able to advocate for the use of tools that support their needs. All of these tools need to be explored and used by all learners. They offer multiple advantages and will enhance language practice and use. This slide contains a number of ideas to be explored when you are adapting the process learners will use to move through a learning task. You may wish to pause the video at this point to discuss or reflect on these questions. When it comes to language learning, one of the most effective approaches is to invite learner mediation. The updated version of the companion volume of the Common European Framework of Reference places a great deal of importance in this approach. It says that mediating a text involves passing on to another person the content of a text to which they do not have access, often because of linguistic, cultural, semantic, or technical barriers. By allowing learners to support one another, using a variety of strategies and approaches, each learner furthers their own skill, but more importantly, even this process takes place in an authentic, interactive way. The fact that the learners need to work through challenges of comprehension and communication by drawing on their own skill is not only supporting them to complete the task, but they are also developing their confidence and aptitude for the future. In mediation, the guide says, the user or learner acts as a social agent who creates bridges and helps to construct or convey meaning, sometimes within the same language, or sometimes from one language to another, which is called cross-linguistic mediation. The focus is on the role of language in processes like creating the space and conditions for communicating and or learning, collaborating to construct new meaning, encouraging others to construct or understand new meaning, and passing on new information in an appropriate form. The context can be social, pedagogic, cultural, linguistic, or professional. At this time, you may wish to pause the video to consider this question. How are you leveraging diverse modes of language use to deepen and or expand learning? The choice of pathway that is created through the content and the scaffold process will, naturally, lead to a need for diversity in the outline of the proposed product or evidence of learning. It is also important to consider both the FSL curriculum and the descriptors of the CEFR proficiency levels when establishing criteria for success. One essential element of designing tasks that effectively respond to the diverse needs of learners is the opportunity for learners to exercise choice in how they will demonstrate their learning. By starting with a clear understanding of curriculum goals, which then support the co-construction of success criteria, natural options for the format and delivery of evidence of learning will often be quite evident. In some cases, however, it may be helpful to brainstorm ideas for the final products with learners and then for the educator to select the options that they feel are most appropriate for a particular learning goal. Engaging in this process can serve to build learner agency, as well as willingness to engage in proposed tasks and develop an understanding of the learning process. Some ideas you may want to consider when designing the criteria for demonstration of learning is the incorporation of various modes of communication, the true competencies being demonstrated by a task, and the appropriateness of various tools and formats in relation to the strengths and needs of your learners. While some learners may thrive when given open-ended opportunities for creativity, others benefit from the use of a clearly scaffolded structure and process to follow. In all cases, the product should be authentic in that it reflects skills and competencies that learners may actually be called to demonstrate in a future real-life scenario. Ensuring that all learners' needs are met through action-oriented tasks is both intentional and natural. As we have seen, the steps of using content and building toward a product need to remain flexible and open. Learners need a well-defined framework through the goals of the task, but they also need choice and authenticity. When familiar topics, vocabulary, and experiences form the starting point, all learners are able to enter into the task. 
exposing learners to many forms of content through videos, podcasts, informational texts, and personal writing, such as a blog, will help learners to become familiar with the advantages and challenges that come with using each type of resource. Much time can be spent practicing comprehension through each form. Doing so means building confidence and ultimately autonomy for the learner. Products will reflect the rich learning and skill development that have resulted from the time invested in thoughtful approaches to content and process. When the educator is helping learners to engage in an action-oriented task in a meaningful way, products will look different in a way that reflects each learner's skills and goals. The CEFR leads us to look at language learning and use through an asset-oriented lens that highlights the use of the six competencies. Products, therefore, are richest when they call on the learner to use multiple competencies that demonstrate the learning and growth that may have happened through the process. The product is the tangible goal. In our case, it is an application to a travel bursary. Without this final product, there is no framework within which the learner can build their skills. Having said this, we wish to be clear, the product exists only through the process, and the richest opportunities for learning and growth are embedded in all of the steps of the task. Assessment is an ongoing process, yet when a learner pulls all of their new competencies together in their product, this is worth celebrating as it mirrors what a learner must be prepared to do when they eventually need to use their language in the world beyond the classroom. As noted on this slide, the same task can be adapted for any level of proficiency. This is a hallmark of a rich action-oriented task. At this time, you may wish to pause the video to consider these questions. How are you integrating assessment into the learning process so that there is a clear value on the learning journey? And how are you providing specific and timely feedback to your learners to support their learning? When designing assessment for, as, and of learning, it is essential that educators consider the triangulation of evidence that can be gathered from observations of, conversations with, and products produced by learners. It is important to note that not all learners need to be assessed in the same way as you move through a learning cycle. For learners who have chosen a final task that is more focused on written production, assessment along the learning journey may focus more on competencies in the areas of speaking, reading, and listening. If the target product demonstrates more skills in the area of speaking, educators may place more emphasis on evaluating competencies in the other areas during the learning process. Critical factors to be considered are that learners must be aware of the various ways that their learning is being assessed and evaluated, where the benchmarks for success are set, and how they will receive timely feedback and incorporate that feedback in order to effectively demonstrate growth. Effectively incorporating diversity into the assessment process is a skill that can take many years to develop. Educators are encouraged to start with small steps and to engage in ongoing professional reflection on how various strategies are working or need to be adapted to better meet the needs of learners. This slide suggests several options to be considered when developing an assessment plan for a proposed learning cycle. Educators need to take their time in building trust and engagement in the process. They design both for themselves and for the learners. If we are to believe that learning happens when the learner spends time using the language, then we need to give learners and educators permission to take the time that they reasonably need. As with any new and complex skill, confidence only develops after several successful attempts at using the skill in a scaffolded setting. As we've highlighted throughout the module, learning a language is primarily a life project and should absolutely be treated as such in the classroom. When tasks are structured in a way that allows learners to be social actors, they are able to use their language in a way that mirrors something that they will need to do at a point in the future. When the educator provides structures within tasks where languages become a conduit to a greater goal, they are providing learners indeed with a skill set that reaches much further into the future. 
talking, reading, and writing about personal skills, traits, travel plans, wishes, community activities, and work are all skills that learners will use far more authentically outside of the classroom than in it. And logically, this will be true several times over, as they gain more and more life experiences. The vocabulary, sentence structures, and grammar rules that will come from learning to communicate about these topics will help learners in their knowledge and precision. However, far more important is the confidence that will come from using this language for the purpose of the action-oriented task. Learners' confidence can help it grow when they engage fully in a motivating action-oriented task, because the structure of the action-oriented task leads them to practice the skills repeatedly for different purposes and with different people. Rooted in the CEFR, the action-oriented task is scaffolded in a way that pushes learners to constantly build on what they can already do. When we start from the premise that learners can accomplish many purposeful tasks with their language, knowing how to support them to work toward doing more becomes entirely possible. While there is always a larger goal tied to an action-oriented task and to learning a language in general, the importance of remaining focused on the smaller learning goals embedded each day within daily practice and lessons cannot be overstated. At this time, you may wish to pause the video to consider this question. How will you adapt content, process, and product, integrating choice and flexibility to build metacognitive competencies and help learners develop their skills for future authentic experiences that you will never see? Your voice and feedback support the development of future professional learning series. Please take a moment to complete the following survey with your team. Should you have any questions about this module, please send an email to omlta at omlta.org. These modules were created under the leadership of the Ontario Modern Languages Teachers Association. The OMLTA is a nonprofit professional association that has been supporting French as a second language and international languages teachers of all programs and grade levels since 1886. Today, it continues to be the leader in professional learning and advocacy, inspiring and connecting Ontario's French and international languages educators. These modules were designed to support FSL educator retention and recruitment by deepening the understanding of the directions, principles, and content of the Ontario curriculum policy documents for all three of the province's FSL programs, Core French, Extended French, and French Immersion. The OMLTA would like to thank the Ministry of Education for its financial support in developing this module. Special thanks is also extended to the educators who contributed their expertise and experience to the development of the modules.